Morning, morning, Saturday the 10th of May 2014. Welcome along to Chris Reardon's United Kingdom Talk. Look what I've got in front of me. Only another couple of days. My Barry Manilow tickets. Oh, yes. At the we- at Wembley. Wembley. Why do all the people that like football add extra letters to the name Wembley? Wembley. W-E-M-B-E-R-L-E-Y. Why do they do that, please? It's Wembley. Wembley. Now, uh, my best mate Ron was supposed to be taking us down to that. Um, but he rung up yesterday, and because of the size of the... Ev- I mean, make no bones about it. People take the mick out of Barry Manilow. They take the mick out of Barry Manilow. They do. And they say, where is he playing? You know, thinking you're going to say somewhere like the Jazz Cafe or something like that. And you say, a oh, Wembley Stadium. And they're like, they're what? Well, they don't seem to be able to get it in their thick heads. Is that... Are you one of them? You're not, are you? They don't seem to be able to get it in their thick heads that Barry Manilow Stadium, Wembley Stadium, will be packed. It will be packed. Absolutely jam-packed. And people don't seem to realise this. Now, where's my little little phone numbers and things gone that should be on the uh, screen there? Just a minute now. Um, oh, my, get, get the mobile phone out of the way. That I should have uh, emails and things up on the uh, screen there, shouldn't I, somewhere? Hang on a minute, let me find that. It should be up there. Huh? That usually, usually comes up on its own. I don't know why that's text. Oh, there it is. One minute. I'm going to put a ticket in a box. There it is. There we are. There, there's, there's the um, Skype in and all that business. People don't seem to realise that he does fill out stadiums. He does. I haven't been to a Barry Manilow concert where there's been empty seats, or at least I haven't seen them. You know, there might be a few at the back. But all those front seats, the front rows, the front sections, the middle section, they're all full up with people. You sit there and say, oh, not Barry Manilow. Why don't you give it a go sometime? There's still a few tickets right at the back where you could go and see him if you want at Wembley. He's all over the place. So I'm going on Tuesday night at Wembley. Still not sure if my dear niece is coming with me or not. Or whether I'm taking one of my aunties. Because my niece has had a baby. It's her second one. Named Emily Athelinda. Athelinda was the name of my nan. And she had this baby last week. Uh, And a little bit of trouble with uh, my niece afterwards for a couple of hours. But that sorted itself out. And um, they're all home now. Emily and baby George and my niece. Now, so we're not sure if my niece is coming on Tuesday, whether she's going to be rested enough and ready or whether she's coming to the one at the O2 on the 26th. So it's all very exciting. Barry Manilow concert. I might even wear my newly cleaned green jumper, which I'm wearing today. Now, I hope you notice this because it's just been cleaned. Right. And um, I, what happened? I've got a little bit of porridge. On it. Isn't that a devil to get rid of porridge? I know someone's going to write in now and tell me how to get rid of porridge on jumpers, aren't you? But I've got a little bit of porridge on the... on the. It was actually on the, on the cuff, on the sleeve there. A little bit down me. I'm, I'm such a messy eater. When I used to eat crisps, they used to go flying all over the place. There were, there were bits in the wall. You know, bits of crisps stuck in the wall. It's true. So I've had this jumper clean today, and my mate Ron says, oh, I'll take it into the dry cleaning. This is last week. I didn't think, oh, yeah, OK, then, all right. So he's come back, and he gave it to me yesterday. Six pounds to clean one bloody item. Did I mention this last week? Six pounds to clean. So if he was to take in, say, four jumpers, that's 24 bloody quid. I've got another jumper that I, I just put it in the washing machine myself, but I get that bobbling stuff, you know, bobbles. I hate that, don't you? Bobbles. I'm not quite sure how to get rid of it. I've got one of those fluff removers. It's like um, it's like a round thing with sticky stuff all around it, and you peel off another layer when it's when it's been used once, uh, and then you, you reveal another bit of sticky, and you go up and down. Now that seems to remove the cat, cat hairs, all right, but not the bobbles. What do you do about bobbles? Because I'm not sure. Now, there's an email address if you'd like to join in at any time. My email address is chris 
at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, all right? Uh, there's a phone number and there's a Skype in number as well. I'm going to ask you to hold off on those for a minute because I've got a couple of emails here and uh, what happened a couple of weeks ago, we, we got to the end of the show and we found we didn't have time for the emails, so I'd like to do those first today. Meanwhile, let's say hello to Shania. Hello, Shania, on the Isle of Wight. Have you got your exam results yet, Shania? Do let us know, my darling. She's been uh, doing lots of exams. Oh, Wendy corrects me. It's Wembley Arena, not Wembley Stadium. Wendy... Is that not the same place then? I think that's probably a good time you told me that. Good job you told me that. So Wembley Arena is not the same as Wembley Stadium. Is that what you're saying? I thought it was the same place. Really? What's it say on the ticket? Well, I didn't know that. Uh, no, I, I mean, I'm sure you're right. Wembley Stadium, but a uh, Wembley Arena... So are you saying Wembley Arena is not Wembley Stadium? I thought it was the same place. Is it the same stop on the tube? Because that's what I was saying. My mate Ron was going to take us there, but because it's going to be so busy, the traffic round there, he says, will be an absolute nightmare on that evening. So he suggested now driving um, myself and whoever else is coming with me to a tube station near there, dropping us off there. Then we get the tube onwards towards Wembley, which I think is the Metropolitan line. And then after the show, we come out again and uh, get back on the tube and uh, go back to the uh, uh, advised point and they pick us up again from the tube station. So I think that's that's what what's going to happen. Um, Wendy says, no, it's not the same place. The arena is the smaller of the two. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's a good job you told me that. Are they near each other? Are they like next door? At all? Or... <laughs> Do you know, it's a good job you told me that, isn't it? Otherwise, I'd be turning up there. Looking for football players. I was just going to follow the football players. Well, I'd do that anyway, to be honest. I was going to follow the football player. So, completely different place. Good God, I, have, I had no idea. Uh, good morning to Shania's mum and dad, who are with us as well this morning as well. And Millie's with us in Minnesota. Good morning, Minnie. Lots of people with us today. Uh, had me haircut as well this week. Oh, that was a sh shocking experience, having me haircut. I tell you, I go to this same place. Me and Ron go to this place. Um, I think it's called DNA's Hairdressers. D and A's Hairdressers. In um, uh, East Hampstead. I think it's East Hampstead in Bracknell. Can't, can't remember. Oh, pre no, Priestwood. Priestwood in Bracknell. DNA's Hairdressers. And uh, lady who owns that is called Tracy. And I love her to be. Tracy is a very glamorous person. Do you know what I mean? She's got the, the tan and the jewellery and always looks really nice, Tracy. And uh, the moment the person cutting my hair at the moment is this young trainee boy um, who's about 18 or 90 and he snips away. Oh, well, he doesn't snip away. He goes, because he's, he's got very short hair. The only thing is, we have any short hair, you have to have it done every two weeks. Otherwise, it starts, it starts coming out and you look very, very straight, like an alien. You do look like an alien. Anyway, so Tracy and I like to have a bit of a laugh. And like she's on one side, uh, like the lady's side, cutting hair. And I'm on the other side with that boy and one of his mates is cutting the men's hair. And I says, how are you, Trace? Are you going to come and come and give us a cuddle? Oh, my God. Well, do you know what she did? So she then, <laughs> she then put her scissors down. She came across me and straddled me on the blooming hairdresser's chair. Oh, it was awful. Oh, my God. It was just... She literally straddled me across the hairdresser's chair and held on to my head and started kissing my face. Oh, it was awful. I mean, I do like her, don't get me wrong, but I think that's going a step too far. Anything could have happened here, you know? And it leakages or something. No, it was awful. Awful. So, please, girls... You know, if we ever meet, please don't do that. <laughs> of course, everyone else in the hairdressers thought it was hilarious. Quite honestly, I wish I'd had my um, uh, little iPhone uh, camera set up so like, I could have videoed that for one of the shows. Oh, it was dreadful doing that. <laughs> um, Wendy says, 
the Wembley, the two Wembley stadiums are quite near to each other, so I, w I wouldn't get lost then. <laughs> I had, I had no idea. How stupid am I? I had no idea that Wembley Stadium and Wembley Arena are two completely different places. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, Shania says on the other way, I've got my music mock result and I got an A. Excellent. I didn't get very, I got an E on music. We did O levels. I don't know if your mum and dad are old enough to have done O levels. I think probably your mum and dad did GCSEs, I would guess. But I, I didn't, I was, I was useless at school, Shania. I really was. I hated it. I, I, I didn't hate the school. I just hated the lessons. <laughs> I quite liked most of the teachers. Oh, there was a couple of evil cows, Shania. Let me think. Now, there was Miss Dwayne. She did history. She was an evil cow. Evil, evil, evil cow. You know, uh, the homework would be, right, I want you to read this chapter of the book and tomorrow I'm going to ask you to tell me about it. And so you go into the lesson, you sit down. Right, uh, so you've all read the chapter. OK, Reardon, tell me about the... Massapolomis, whatever, I don't know. And I'd stand, I just couldn't do it. And then she'd start shouting, why haven't you done this? And all this old business, oh, she was horrible. Horrible, Mr. Wa Mr. Lap. She married Mr. K Kalinchki, who was another one of my unfavourite lessons, P.E. Oh God, how awful is P.E.? I hated it. I hated P.E. Jumping over that thing, you know, that, what is it, is it called a horse? in the PE room. I absolutely hated it. We didn't like PE. Climbing up on those ropes that go up the side. Really hated it. I hated most lessons. I actually liked music, and yet I got an E for it. I wasn't good at all at that. All I got was two O levels, uh, both grade Cs in physics and English. Maths? Oh, I didn't have a bloody clue what was going on there. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what was going on. I used to stand. <laughs> I used, and we had a wonderful maths teacher at one point. Now, what was him? Can't remember his name, but but my my most memorable moment of our maths teacher was when he drew a circle unaided on the blackboard a perfect circle and the whole class erupted and clapped hands and all that business he was all right i just didn't know what a bloody hell he was going on about french french <laughs> he used to oh, i've been in a classroom looking at these words and thinking, what does that mean <laughs> See, half the problem was, you see, and we had so much home. I went to a very good school, the London Oratory School. I, li I, I, li I liked the school. I just didn't like the lessons. I couldn't do anything. I was useless. Absolutely useless. My mum used to do all my homework, you see. Well, I've mentioned this before. And then all I'd have to do was, was, was copy it out. The trouble is, I used to complain the fact that I had to copy the homework out. Ari, well, Ari, that was all right. You know, I didn't didn't have a problem with Ari. Um, physics, again, very distressing physics. <laughs> um, I think the most exciting one because the, the physics teacher she had Frizier, Frizier. Now, what was her name? Mrs. Mon. Oh, I don't know. Nice lady, mad as a hatter. There were two physics teachers, and they were just mad people these physics people and the one with the frizzy ear once she i don't know she was standing on something and i think there was spark was there a bit of a spark coming out of her finger or something like that can't remember biology i thought biology was a bit boring oh and we had to cut up a rat once that was awful oh out of this rat come out of the freezer and the teacher, Mr. Murphy, that was, he was all right. Mr. Murphy got these rats out of the freeze and apologised that they hadn't thought out enough. <laughs> swimming, Mr. Allison at uh, swimming. He was a, a, a very odd character. Mr. Allison. I hated swimming, although I go every day now. You know, I, I hated swimming. You know, the, the smell, the smell of the swimming pool. It used to turn my stomach. It really did. 
as you went down, you know, into the changing room, you smelt this. Oh, I no, I didn't like school at all. So well done, Shania. Uh, she got a music mock result and got an A, which is excellent. I have my proper exam starting Monday. Have you? Okay. Um, oh, no, par her parents did O-levels. Uh, I hate PE as well. Good. Um, I, I, I expect, Shania, that everyone is telling you to... Oh, I don't want to up your, set your parents here. I'm, I'm just going to say it. I expect a lot of people are telling you to do lots of revision and all that now, my darling. Um, I, I've got to say, I... I didn't do any revision at all, which is probably why I got such terrible mark. But I, I think I know of people that, that have stayed up all night doing revision. And I'm, I'm not sure that that helps, really. You know, I, I, I kind of take the the opinion, if you don't know it now, you're not going to know it in the next two days before the before the. Um, before the exams i think what revision does is if you already know stuff that it can sort of remind you do you know what i mean so if you've got something in the back of your head you've got all this knowledge in your head you're probably very intelligent I'm not, i don't class myself as an intelligent person at all shania but if you've got all this knowledge in the back of your head and it's right back there and then you know you might pick up your religion book uh, 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 uh re not religion your um re um Oh, what the word's gone out of my head now. The rev oh, what is it now? Revision. You might pick up your revision book and start. Oh yes, I remember that. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that as well. I was listening to a, uh, uh, the radio the other night on um, LBC, and someone rang in. A caller rang in and told told everyone that her English teacher just before the exam told them to write an essay on whatever they wanted and then when it came to the exam fit the essay to the questions that are asked do you understand what i mean so you you, you just write an essay about whatever and then you get into the exam you look at you look at the the questions and you you, you fit the essay that you've already written that's in your head to that exam, which I suppose is possible. You just have to change it round a bit. So I don't know if that would be any good for you, my darling. But well done, you know, good luck with your exams. What do you want to be, Shania? Because you're 16 now, I think. 16 or 17. What, what do you want to do when you leave school? Or don't you know yet? Do you want to be one of these clever uni people? University. What a blooming waste of time I thought that was. <laughs> See, when I was a child, and your mum and dad will tell you this as well, um, we were not really pushed to university. The option was there if you wanted to go, right? But it wasn't really pushed down your throat. That was Tony Blair. You know, he kept telling everyone, oh, you must go to university, you must go. And that's why so many people go to university. And you know, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if you're going to be academic and you think it's going to improve, then, then go. But I certainly don't think that everyone should be going to university. I think that is a complete and utter waste of time. It would have been with me. I stayed on at sixth form. Complete and utter waste of time staying on at sixth form because I just sat there getting bored. Why did I do it? Because uh, I was afraid to go out into the big wide world. That's the only reason I stayed on for another year. But I didn't actually achieve anything at all, really. So good luck, Shania. Tell us what you want to do. All right, my darling. Um, good morning, Simon. Also on the Isle of Wight, Shania's dad, who says, I think you'll find Barry is singing in the caretaker's shed. Should be able to feel that as long as he can fit his nose. And how dare you? Please don't watch this show anymore, Simon. How rude are you? Don't you be saying stuff about our Barry. You wait now. You're going to get these messages flying in now. I shall give out your address later. It's number one, Apple Tree Lodge, Shanklin, Isle of Wight. OK? So please write your letters to Simon. <laughs> and tell her, how dare you take the mick out of Barry. Who's your... Who's your um? Uh, favourite. See, ba see, Barry Manilow is not a celebrity. He is a megastar. There is a difference. Now, who is your megastar or celebrity, Simon? Do let us know. Do let us know who your favourite star is, OK? 
Uh, good morning to Marge. We've got a nice long email coming up from Marge very, very shortly. Like, Caretaker shed, how dare you? It's like, I'll wait till I see him. I'm going to tell him. I'm actually going to tell Barry Manilow when I see him on Tuesday, all right? Um, good morning to Angel, who actually... Angel is the closest person to me. Good morning, Angel. When I say closest, she's in the same road. Now, I never knew Angel. This is... I've known her for a few years now. I th I've met her a couple of times face-to-face -face when she's getting in her, in her chariot. Haven't I, my her chariot? And um, she lives literally two minutes' walk from here in the same road. She says, you can get a bobble remover brush just like a sort of razor chops the little devils off. Oh, I'm going to have to look for that then. I will have a look um, uh, for this bobble remover. In fact, I'm going to write that down on my shopping list for later on to do today or maybe maybe next week. Bobble remover. That's it, bobble remover. Thank you very much. I shall, I shall definitely look for one of those. And good morning to radio show host. Good morning, sir. Who says, Chris, we can see dandruff on your shoulders. Or is it crumbs from morning cereal? No, you can't. No, you can't. Don't lie. Right, because this has been dry cleaned. Six pounds. Six pounds to clean one item. It's a liberty. That's what it is. Six quid to clean one item. It's too much. Shania's thinking of going into media. Oh, well, that's good. I did as well. I thought I was going to end up uh, on radio or something like that, Shania. Um, believe it or not, I've never actually done anything about it. I've, I've never actually done anything about going on radio. I think I sent off two demos and no reply and I thought oh you're, you're not going to be bothered because it, it wouldn't be the same I I know a couple of people who have been um, on LBC and uh, talk talk radio when it was talk radio, it's talk sport now but when it was talk radio and I had like normal conversations and uh, they both told me you know if, if you ever get into real uh, I, I say real radio, FM radio. If you ever was to get into FM radio, you would hate it because there's all these restrictions. You know, you can't do this, you can't do that. Whereas doing this, I know I don't get paid to do this, but, you know, I, I, can, I can say anything I want. Anything I want. You know, I wouldn't want to purposely upset someone. Absolutely not. I wouldn't want to purposely upset someone. But, basically, I can say anything I want. Sometimes, um, I think I, I, I'm probably a little bit more controversial on my Facebook wall sometimes. And by the way, if you're not on my Facebook, you can join me on there. It's Chris Reardon UK. Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK is my Facebook name. Join us on there, or, or Twitter, but I don't really use Twitter. I was having this conversation with Marge uh, the other day. We got a nice long email from Marge very shortly. Um, and uh, she went on to Google Circles. And I said, well, don't, don't expect a reply from me on there because I can't work it out. Google, why do they make these things so complicated? All the trouble is with all this stuff, uh, Google Circles and Facebook and Twitter, is designed by computer people. <clears throat> now, I don't class myself as a computer person. I learn the absolute basics. Take this show, for example, right? I learn the absolute basic basics for me to get on. And that's, that's all I want to know, you know? And, and that's the end of it. It really is. Right, um, Angel says, Hi, Chris. I don't know if you're able to help, but as you know, I'm having a 60th birthday party. Do you know, I... Do you know what, Angel? I'm only nine years away from 60th as well. Oh, God. People say, you know, what were you going to do when you retire? Hopefully more of these little shows. I'd love to do something daily like this. At the moment, you know, it's the, the live show I do once a week on a Saturday. And I do lots of little videos during the week, one a day. You can find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. A little daily video. Oh, by the way, um, I've bought a new URL, but it's not working yet. So I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, I apparently you buy the URL. That, that's the address thing at the top. You know, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. So I've bought a new one of those for the videos. 
Um, but it's not working yet. I bought it Thursday and I thought I'd set up the web diversion, but it's not working yet. So I've opened a ticket with UK2.net, the web uh, address provider type people. I don't know what you, you call them. And uh, waiting for them to result, re re uh, reply on that. OK. Anyway, she says, sorry you aren't able to come. Yes, I, I, I work Saturdays. The trouble is, you know, when, when you get a regular booking um, angel, like a, a regular Saturday, a reg I mean, I work every night except Friday at the moment. I've got Fridays free at the moment. Um, although I'm, <laughs> I, did, I, I am looking for another Friday now, to be honest. I've had a few Fridays off now and I get a little bit bored. Although I did go down and see my mate the other day who said, would you be interested in, in taking a Friday off me? So I, so I said to him, yeah, I'll come down and have a look. Oh, my God, it was, it was so boring. I thought, no, I don't want to do this one. I said, I'll fill in for you a couple of times, but I don't want to take this one on permanently. You know, poor old soul. He was standing up there on a stage. There were about 15, 15 people just sitting on tables. No one was ever going to dance. There was no interaction with the crowd. And I thought, oh, God. And he's got to stand up there for five hours. No, thank you. I'm very lucky. I don't need to take the boring ones anymore. Anyway, back to this email. Um, Angel says, I'm supporting the MS Society, Multiple Sclerosis Society. I hope I've said that. I'm never quite sure if I've said that right or not. Multiple Sclerosis Society by running a raffle at the party. As you know, I'm in a wheelchair and I was going back uh, to call on shops to see if they could donate some raffle prizes. But because of my agoraphobia, that's, that's the going out thing, isn't it? I'm a bit worried I might get to the shop, then whoosh, and back off home like a chicken. Have you got chickens in your house, then? Are, are you keep, is it, do you need a licence for that? Have you got a licence for that, Angel? Chicken keeping? Is there? What are they, have you got names for them? Oh, bless little chickens. They're quite cuddly creatures, you know. I saw a video of these chickens and there was a little girl. She was about five or six years old. And the chicken would go running over to her and she'd give it this big hug. And the chicken would put its little head on her, on her, um, on her shoulder. It was ever so nice. Um, she carries on, was wondering if anyone listening could please help me by donating something towards the raffle. If someone is generous enough to be able to donate something, it can be picked up within a 12 mile radius of Bracknell. Or contact me on my email address and I will give them my home address to send it. Um, so, uh, shall I give out your email address, Angel? I don't know if you want me to. Well, I'll have to, won't I? Oh, no, no. You can send me the email, boys and girls, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and I'll pass it on. All right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'm like you. I don't drink, but I think I may have a little tipple this year as a 60 is a milestone. Any excuse? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, d I just have... If I'm out to one of those posh afternoon teas that I go to sometimes or uh, on a plane, I'll have a glass of champagne. Oh, and at church. I do have a tiny little mouthful of wine while I'm at church. You know, it's quite funny sometimes. I go to St. Joseph's in, Cath in um, uh, Catholic Church in, uh, in, in Bracknell every Sunday at half past ten. And, you know, I have my bread and I go over to the, to the, to, to the chalice and I grab this and I, I swallow it down. And then <laughs> the woman who gives it to me, she looks in and looks at me disgustedly, you know, that I've finished the whole thing off. <laughs> I'm not a wine drinker, but I must say I do quite like the taste of that wine. I wonder what wonder what wine it is. Yeah, you know, can you get church wine in 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 Waitrose or not? I don't know, Angela and um, Angel. Loved your video of you decorating your mate's garden. Yes, that was was that last week or the week that was the week before last, wasn't it? Because it was his birthday, so when he went out to a hotel, when he come back, I'd put all flags and things over his garden so that he'd be embarrassed. I like to do things like that. You can find that video on my short videos. You find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right. Um, I can't do my garden now. I have turned my long, long landing into my garden with silk flowers. I'm not, not keen on silk flowers, to be honest, uh, uh, Angel. I don't like um, plastic or silk flowers or anything like that. But, you know, each and every one to themselves, my darling. Um, Richard 
has had to take my puppy, Gina, to the vet this afternoon. Oh, is that today? Poor thing has a skin rash from scratching. Oh, oh I bet they put a collar on. I bet you they, they'll have one of those plastic collars on. It's strange. I get upset when she's poorly, just like I did, did, did when my kids were young. No, I don't think that's strange at all. You know, our pets become members of the family. They really do. You know, I've had three cats. I've got one left now. And when, when you lose a pet, it's just awful. They are members of the family. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. So there we are, Angel. All right, my darling. There's a little... Um, oh, now what's this you've sent me? A little picture there. I don't think I'm going to be able to show that. Let's have a look. Is that your, is that your little dog there? Oh, you sent me a picture of your dog. Look at that. Look at his little mouth. That's it. Thank you very much. Um... <laughs> Angel says, are you a Time Lord? Your video on the 5th of May is down as 2015. Is it? Oh, thank you for that. Right, I'll, I'll change that later. What one? Check 5th of May. I do rely on people to tell me if there's something wrong occasionally. Okay. Uh, back to the Isle of Wight. And Shania says, I do too much revision. I was still doing it at 11.30 last night. See, I don't know if that's a good thing because you just end up getting very tired and forgetting stuff. You know? I, you know, it does worry me, that. Um, S Simon says... I didn't do any revision, and university is a complete waste of time. Well, it isn't, it isn't, Simon. It depends on you does, and, and what you want to do, really. Uh, you know, sometimes it's a waste. It would have been a waste of time for me, probably you as well. You know, if you want to be a builder or something, the last thing you want to do is sit in a bloody great big hall with lecturers chatting away to you all the time. How boring would that be? And he says, my favourite celebrity is Chris Reardon. Oh, Ray Reardon, the snooker player. Christ, well, he must be a bit past it now, isn't he? Is he able to hold the balls anymore? Sorry, mate, friend. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Um, we got a, a birthday today, boys and girls. Now, where's my, where's my birthday note? And a couple more emails. As I say, uh, not doing calls at the moment because we must do these emails, otherwise they they get missed out again. And uh, if you've taken the effort to, to send an email in, then I do like to read them out. Uh, if we get time at the end, uh, I'll take a, a, a call or two at the end. All right? I can't take them at the moment while I've got these emails sitting here. Uh, but it is a birthday today. Gary Davidson. Gary Davidson. Are you ready, sir? Here we go. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Gary. you got a little message here as well. Uh, hello, Chris. You're doing a good, good show so far. Can you say hello to Gary, whose birthday it is today? Gavin, Joey, Tish. Tish. Uh, that's a good name. Tish and myself, who are all on Skype while listening and watching you. Keep up the good work and say hello to Millie in Minnesota for you. So hello, Millie, uh, from all of those. All of those lovely people. All right? Now, let me, let me just... Do my bits and pieces here. See if I'm missing anything out. I don't like to miss anything out. Uh, one thing I've noticed some people do is put a a note on the YouTube, and I often I often miss those. So I'm trying to be careful not to miss anything today. I do try to keep everything together at all times. Okay. Uh, Marge says those collars um, are called. Uh, Elizabethan collars. You know the ones that you put on the dog? They're like a plastic thing and it stops the, stops the dogs from, poor dogs from scratching themselves. I can't think of anything worse, actually. Can you just imagine having an itch and you can't scratch it? Oh, I'd hate that. Oh, by the way, that's a good, by the way, a good use for a remote control. Okay, I've, I, dis <laughs> I discovered this the other night. So if you've got a remote control, this is for the air conditioning. Is that working, Mike? I haven't had that on this year. This is for the air conditioning. Okay, turn it round so that the buttons face your back. Shove it down your back and give it a good old scratch. 
They make wonderful back scratchers. <laughs> Remote control users. All right. Hello to Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. How are you today, sir? He says, I have to say you're looking very well. How are you coping without the crisps? Very well, actually. Very, very well indeed. No crisps. Uh, two packets of crisps have passed my mouth since beginning of March. They were on Easter Sunday and I didn't like them. They were too salty. My body has got used to not having that salt. It's got to be a good thing because they all say too much salt. You get strokes and get strokes and things like that, don't you? <laughs> no, please don't be offended, anyone, you know. Never be offended at what anything I say, OK? Um, Jonathan says, I don't think I have your willpower. Yeah, I bet you do. You're just going to get to it. I agree with what you say about the universities. There are so many highly successful people out there who didn't go to uni. Time consuming and expensive. But I'm still friends with people I went to uni with. What is your oldest friend, Chris? Uh, Chris, in terms of how long you have known them? Ooh. Would this be someone I'm still in contact with? In which case... Oh, I've just realised the air condition is on, isn't it? Shall I leave that on? Oh. Do I need that on? I don't need that on. There, do I? Don't, I don't like to turn things on unnecessarily and use the electricity. Um, oldest friend who I'm still in contact with. Do you know... Oh, that's that's going to be... That would be Fiona. That would be Fiona, my first ever girlfriend. Yes, Fiona, who I'm still in contact with her now. Yeah. Yes, that, that, that would be sort of my longest friend. On, uh, on the male side, uh, that would be Steve. I think Steve I don't it's not like hundreds of emails going now and again we send each other a text and see what we're both up to uh, but yes he's an ambulance driver and he's got a lovely family I think three children and uh, a wife and he's over in uh, Anglia region uh, what do you call it Norwich way I think he's over there somewhere in the middle of the country yeah, so, so they're, they're my longest friends alright uh, oh a message from Gary who's birthday hello Gary how old are you today? You're looking so much older. You really are than you were yesterday. God's sake. So old. <laughs> who says, thanks, mate. Enjoying the show. Thank you, Gary. And by the way, just in case you're wondering who, who, who this is. OK, that's a guy called Carl, Carl Waring, who played the piano for me and recorded that a few years ago. I thought it was quite a nice version. All right. Um. Simon, no, I'm not reading that, Simon. <laughs> oh, I will read it. Simon says, on the subject of Ray Reardon, Ray Reardon was a snooker player, and he says he can hold the balls all right, but he's, his stick is a bit shaky. <laughs> yes, well, we'll leave that one there. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, you were with us live. If it's Saturday, coming up to 20 to 1 on the 10th of May 2014, you are indeed with us live. A very uh, warm morning to you, or afternoon it is now. Uh, got to say hello to CW. He's in Victoria, Australia, who says, Good day, Chris. Chris from Victoria, Australia here. Yes, I haven't wrote in some time now. Well, I think we all know that, dear. And do you know what? Every time now, every time you send an email now, CW, you start off with, yes, I haven't written some time. <laughs> I know. We get about four emails a, week, a, a year from you now. That's it. Sorry, mate. I still listen to each and every show, though. Just now listening to your last podcast. That would be last week. Where you talk about Barry Manilow DVD you purchased and said it wasn't Blu-ray. But oh well, I did a quick search on eBay. And yes, there are some Barry Manilow Blu-rays out there. And they are in the UK. Just search under Barry Manilow, Manilow Live, new Blu-ray. So I shall have a look for that. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you will find at least three for sale in your area. Don't know if you're keen, but thought of you... 
and did this search, my friends. Hope you have a blast at the concerts uh, next week. And that's from Chris in Victoria, Australia. Thank you very much, Chris. Always a pleasure to hear from you, sir. But on your next email, I'd like to know what you're up to. I always like to to know what people are doing in their lives. You know, especially people uh, that that are regular, sort of regular correspondents to the show. Or, or people that have never written before. I would like to hear from you. Especially we have a lot of people now listening in two particular countries, Mexico and Russia. I don't know why, possibly learning English, but I know you're out there, Mexico and Russia. So if you're one of those people, then do send us in an email, OK? Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Uh, .co .uk. Um, right. Uh, so we've done done Angel's little email there. Thank you for that, Angel. Let me just put that to one side or I'll start reading it again. Oh, no, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing half the time. Uh, Vicky Gannon says, Good morning, Chris. This is last week, OK? Uh, I can't believe you've still got your old Scout uniform. Yes, I have. Yes, it's, it's in the cupboard somewhere. I me well, I meant to get that out today to show you as well. I forgot to get it. I thought I saved a lot of old stuff, but you beat me by a country mile. Would the name of the bird be written on the uniform as part of a badge or emblem? Yeah, because I, the, when I was in the Scouts, the patrols had names. Um, and I can't remember the name of of my patrol. I know my friend Philip. He was in Kestrels. It might have been Swift. It might have been Swift. Swift. Swift patrol alert. Could it have been Swift? It, it could have been Swift. I'm not 100% sure. So still trying to think of what that was. And she said, gives names of birds. Starlings, robins, sparrows. No, none of those. Was, wasn't one of those, Vicky. I cannot remember for the life of me what the name of that patrol was. All right. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Here comes a nice long email from uh, Marge this week. Hello, Marge. And Marge says, I was watching my morning cup of Chris Reardon archived shows. Oh, there's so many of them now, isn't there? Do you know... Audio-wise, we go back nearly nine years now. I've been talking rubbish now for nine years. And I think the video ones go back about four or five years, all right? And it's surprising, actually, when you look back on some of the older videos, the, the quality, the quality of the video is so much better now. It really is, as, as technology has moved on, isn't it? Um... I was watching my morning cup of Chris Reardon archive shows. I downloaded it off YouTube in 3GP format. I don't know what that is. <laughs> You're throwing technicals at me, Marge. Uh, which fits nicely as a video onto my cell phone. And today, you were talking with Terry Turner in 2010. Oh, so, so it's at least four years since we've been doing the... Um, the videos, is it? I'm not quite sure exactly when I started the video. Was it? Would it be 2008? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? Oh, it might be six years or even longer. I don't know. I was curious about if he is still a DJ and whatever happened to him. Yes, Terry Turner is still a DJ and he runs. I think he's run. I'm not sure if he does actually run it, but I know he's on Fenland Radio. And you can get that is an internet radio station, OK? Fenland Radio. Does he also do a talk show? No, he doesn't. He did. He did actually do a talk show once on a station I was running, United Kingdom Radio. But I gave up running that because it was just a complete and utter pain um, doing it. If so, can you provide a link? Well, just have a look. Look up Fenland Radio, probably on Facebook, and I'm sure you'll find it on there, my darling. If you if you can't, then then send me an email and I'll 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 uh, have a look myself. For you okay? I hope your new arrival is doing well, along with its mum. That'll be uh, baby Emily, Emily Affelinda, and my niece Tracy, and of course her husband Ben and their little boy George. Your video of giving birth was both disgusting and laughable. Did you see that one I did this week? <laughs> so I did. I do short videos every day. Um, you find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And I did one this week of, 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 of me giving birth. Well, it wasn't actually me. It was, you know, it was supposed to be a parody of someone giving birth. 
Have a look. Have a look. Do you want to know which one it is? Hang on, I'll look it up for you. Uh, I don't know. How, I'm not quite sure how to find them myself, to be honest. Hang on a minute. It would be the one. It's either Monday the 5th of May. Oh, I see that I've, I've got the wrong date there, haven't I? Monday the 5th of May. It was either Monday the 5th of May. Or was it Tuesday the 6th of May? One of those two. Monday the 5th of May or Tuesday the 6th of May, okay? <laughs> that's where they are. She says, at least that's one thing you won't ever have to experience. What, having a baby? No, thank God for that. I had a burst appendix once. That was bad enough. I've never had a child and never want the experience myself either. Well, my, my niece says to me, that has told me that's the last one. She don't want to go through it again. I'm not much into human babies, but hand over a puppy or kitten and I'm all mush. I bet you are. I have a nest full of starlings in the hitch in front of my camper, because Marge lives in a camper in uh, Oklahoma, underneath the overhang. I can reach in and pet their little heads. They're so cute. Mum fusses at me, but she comes right back and feeds them. I would hate to be a bird. I mean, it's like every 10 minutes she has to feed the buggers. <laughs> well, I've got, um, I've got a, a bird's nest in my garden, in fact, Marge, and it's in the holly bush. I've got a big, big holly bush I planted about, oh dear me, about 14 years ago. It was only small. It's a massive, big, thick trunk it's got. We do like a thick trunk, don't we? And um, <laughs> it's got <laughs> the little hot, spiky holly bushes coming out from it. Uh, uh, leaves and all that sort of thing and I noticed there were birds flying in at the bottom and then they climb up and they've always got worms in their mouth so there is a bird's nest in there and it's fascinating to watch it it really is seeing, seeing them coming and going I used to have a pet starling that could actually talk its name was Maynard Maynard the starling talks very well for being a wild bird Maynard would actually converse with you I came home one day and he said as I entered the door, where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? Is that a good impression of a bird? Maybe not. I replied, none of your business. And he replied, well, like a person would get flustered at you for not telling them. He knew the words Maynard, Maynard, his name. Quit it, the wolf whistle. <laughs> That's what men whistle as sexy looking women in here uh, in America. Not sure if you call it that in the UK. Yeah, we call it the same, a wolf whistle. I mean, I get it quite often myself as I'm walking past building sites, you know, in my little shorts. I'm just walking, minding my own business. I hear that suddenly come from the top of a scaffolding. You know, I mean, how dare these builders be whistling at me? Anyone would think I was easy. Pardon? Uh. He would call our dog saying, here Lobo, here bugger, which was really sad because later the two dogs died of old age, yet Maynard would keep calling them. <laughs> if you try and clean out his cage, cage, he would yell, quit! And then he would want to come up on the cage for you to stroke him. See, birds, I, birds do, they like that. People think birds have no personality. They absolutely do. They really do. He had this huge cage, and when we let him fly around in the house a lot most of the time, uh, some would think it would be bad to own a wild bird, but he was very loved, well-fed, and didn't have to fight off predators or the cold in the winter. Yeah, when, when we had um, budgerigars, we had two budgerigars when I was a child, and we used to let that out, and you know, it would fly around the room and perch itself on top of the um, the curtain curtain rail at the top there, or the curtain wire. They say mockingbirds can live 20 years in captivity, but I'm not sure on starlings. I think starlings came from overseas. I know you do have them in the UK. It's hot here at the moment, about 90 degrees Fahrenheit in Oklahoma, and still a drought. I bought a red bud tree to plant in the front yard. There are no native, none native in Oklahoma, so don't cost a lot to buy a nice-sized tree. 
Really do hope our drought lets through. It's about seven years now. Seven years of drought. Wow. I think seven seems to be a number common on droughts. I think Mother Nature knows uh, what she's doing. Um, well, if you put a new tree and you want to water that, my darling, keep that watered. A bucket of water a day, they tell you, they tell us over here. If you're in a drought, a bucket of water, just put it around, you know, where the roots are and, 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 and get that tree going. And you have got to do that for a long time if there's no rain coming. Just keep doing it. You get a lot of rain in the UK from all the videos I watch. Seems like you're always carrying an umbrella. <laughs> we do. I forget what you call them. Umbrellas, I mean. Can you give an example of a day's meal that you're eating? Um, well, uh, in the morning I'll have porridge. Maybe with blueberries uh, and honey. In the afternoon, I'll have a big thing of vegetables and probably a couple of veggie burgers, something like that. And again in the evening, I'll have a great big pot of vegetables and maybe veggie burgers again or vegetarian sausages. Or I might have vegetarian chilli, something like that. And then two apples. Oh, I also tend to have a little bit of ice cream now that I've lost the weight I want to lose. And I'm just below 12 stone now. That's where I'm, I'm kind of holding there, all right? I like to chew, cheat eating chocolate too, but it gives me migraines. Oh, I haven't had cho Oh, no, I did have some chocolate biscuits yesterday at Ronnie's house. He forced them down my throat. He forced me to eat chocolate biscuits, boys and girls. Terrible, isn't it? I like to eat chocolate, but it gives me migraines. I've heard of people, yeah, it gives migraines eating chocolate. I can eat, however, some carob or carob it's like an alternative to chocolate but of course not exactly the same taste well oh uh, yeah i mean it never is i know they do diabetic chocolate and i know diabetic people who have had diabetic chocolate and don't like it really um when i watched a video of you and ron and his boyfriend eating i missed the part of it being his birthday meal usually you're very frugal on things like that which is why i thought ron paid for it I didn't mean you couldn't afford it or anything. <laughs> I just thought it was a simple eating out thing, then realised it was a birthday gift. Yeah, it was a birthday gift. We took him to the, um, uh, what do you call it? The afternoon tea thing at uh, at the hotel, the Coworth Hotel in um, Ascot. That was it, Ascot. Beautiful place. My problem is with so many food allergies, I can't, I have, I can't eat out too much anymore. And she says, well, I think this is enough for the week. I'm having to rebuild my computer from some garage sale parts. It's not too bad, but still about five years old. So I don't do much more than email now. As always, have a good week ahead. Gargle with some warm wa vinegar water that will cure your throat. Believe me, uh, you know me and my witchy remedies. Those, thank you very much for that, Marge. Always a pleasure to have a nice long email there. Um, what's the time? Seven minutes. So we can probably do one call or two short calls. If you want to ring in now, boys and girls, you can do so. The Skype is open now. It's all one word. Chris Reardon. OK, Skype in on Chris Reardon. Or you can call in now if you want a quick chat. But it will only be about five minutes. Um, uh, phone number 20 8133 OK, 20 Eight one double three six three five eight, and I'll take your call now. We couldn't take the calls earlier on today, as I say, because we had a uh, quite a little little selection of emails coming in. And we only do the hour. One day, one day, I'll be able to sit here doing a little show every day, and I, I look forward to that. But not at the moment, not while I'm working. My fingers to the bone. I really am. Oh, so uh, if you want to call in now, please feel free to do so. Uh, for, I'll take the first one that comes through. Skype, Chris Reardon, all one word, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, or phone number 020-8133-6358. Uh, something I did yesterday, oh, by the way, it's just coming up to five to one. We're only going to have a couple of minutes on a phone call if you do call in. I know there were some people trying to call in earlier, but it was it was just impossible. Must must finish the emails, dear. Um, uh, Simon says, "I heard that you were firm, but but fair. Oh, always fair, always fair." Marge says, "The veggie burgers have bread. I'm quitting bread. Well, it depends. They can have bread or they can't have bread. 
you know, it depends which ones you get, really. You can get veggie burgers covered in bread and all that business. I think, uh, I don't think mine have got bread in them. I get the Linda McCartney ones and they've got a bit of cheese in them, which is quite nice. Injected with, with, with mozzarella cheese or something like that. For very tasty. Um, yesterday, for the first time ever, oh, here we go. Here's a phone call now. There we are. Good morning. Who's on line 2,578? Hello. Good morning. Hello, Chris Reed, and it's Keith George. Hello, Keith. How are you today? We've already had a little FaceTime, a private FaceTime earlier, didn't we? We did. I forgot to ask you earlier if it was at all possible if you could do a very special happy birthday wish to my very best friend, who you know as well, Miss Jackie Can, who's going to be her birthday on Monday. Oh, is it? Jackie Can yes. on Monday? Yes. Oh, hang on a minute. Do we want the music as well, dear? Yeah, we can sing along. Right, oh, hang on Hang on a minute I mean, then. I, I mean, I'm, um, I'm not sure of her age, and it's, it's rude to oh, ask it's, a lady. Oh, it's got to be. She must be well into her 70s now, I would have said. 70s? I would say so, wouldn't you? Oh, well, I think she's in her late 40s. Late 80s, did you say? Oh, well, maybe late it is 40s. the 80s, late, I late don't know. 40s, dear. <laughs> I've actually left the villa and, and Maria's in there on her own and I, I'm a bit worried, actually. All right, then let, let's sing to her. Are you ready? Yes. Get ready. And happy birthday to you. Jackie, we bloody yeah. well love Jackie. Let me tell you, boys love and girls, the show. Love, Jackie. Love the show, so I'm actually listening to you in the car on the way to the airport now. Oh, where are you off to today then? No, I'm not off to. I'm picking someone up who's coming here uh, to stay at Villa Villa Blanca. Yeah, just just know, a minute, Keith. I'd like just, I just have to just have to stop you. Stay there a second. Um, those of you that listen to the show on UK Health Radio, you're going to leave us now. Thank you very, very much for joining us. And we'll be back next week for another hour of fun from UK Health Radio. All right, Keith. Yeah. You were saying, sir, where are you off to? I oh, know, I'm going to pick my mate up from the airport. Oh, yes, he's from over here, isn't he? How long's he staying for? Oh no, my friend uh, Victor. He's from. He has, actually from. He's from um, Venezuela. Venezuela. Wow. Yeah, but next, my, my friend. My friend's arriving from um, uh, England. Supposed to be a very beautiful country, Venezuela. Well, you can get in, but you can't get out. It, it's, that's had its fair share of uh, troubles, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So there we are. My mum was listening to you today. On the, she's watching you as well. Oh, she, Josie, is she still with us? Don't know. Yeah. Are you, yes. Hello, you Josie. Can, are, you, are, you, are we still on the radio now? We are. Yes. No. Yes, oh, we are. Yes. Um. Uh. Yes. Yeah, she, she's watching. She's watching. Uh, she said do, to me, do you want to uh, tell her anything? Said, like, put the dinner in the oven, or do anything like no, that? We're, we're, we're going out to a barbecue today. Oh, lovely. Yeah. So, um, but she did say. That, um, she said, oh, you look you look like him. Oh, he's lovely, he is. He's just live now, he's just live now. He's yes. Quite live. Yes, Mum, yes. So, yes, yeah, so she enjoyed your show as well. She's our first-time listener, so there we Good. are. Good. And you do your own shows, don't you? Where can we find those, Keith? You can find them on YouTube. Subscribe to Keith George. YouTube.com forward slash Keith George. Is that the correct address? I believe so. Or you can find it on my Facebook page. Always, always very important to give them the correct address because otherwise they won't find it. Yeah, I have got um, lots and lots of people um, uh, waiting to join my my Facebook page, and I am knocking people off um, who I don't really know. So I've been sending out messages and saying, you know, where are people and blah blah blah. I have to go now, Chris, because my friend's here. Bye bye, dear. Nice to talk to you, Keith. Bye -bye, there we are. Bye bye. bye, -bye. There we are. He's got his own YouTube channel. Okay, uh, uh, YouTube.com forward slash uh, Keith George. Anyone else want to call in quickly just before we go now? Um, and that would be fine. Up to you. Otherwise, I should disappear. You've got about two minutes to call in if you want to call in now. 
Um, yes, uh, if you want to watch his, uh, he does these videos, nighttime natters. I must warn you, they can be a bit rude. OK, I do try and keep this particular show as clean as possible. I don't know why. You know, we all do different things. We all do different things. I like to keep this as clean as possible. And I know I swear sometimes. Not 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 offensive. I, I don't think it's offensive swearing. Um, the swearing sometimes I do. It's just within context. You can get offensive swearing. And um, I, I'm, I'm not really up to that. Um, and finally, then. That's what I was going to say. Um, I went for the first time ever into a betting shop yesterday. And I've placed a bet on the Eurovision Song Contest. I have indeed. That's on tonight. Eight o'clock BBC One or wherever it is uh, in your country. OK, because it goes all over the world. The Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, the UK entry is from Molly. I don't think that stands a chance. Not over impressed with... Uh, that particular song. Um, I've placed a bet on Austria to win. Conchita Hurst is the name. Uh, it is a drag queen. I haven't voted because it's a drag queen. I voted because the song is damn good. You can look it up. It's called Rise Like a Phoenix. All right. Look it up. Rise Like a Phoenix. Conchita Hurst. H U R S T, I think it was. I think it was Conchita Hurst or something like that. Hello, who's calling in now? Hello. Huh? Hello. 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 Who's that? I'm trying to bring Chris Reardon. Yeah, that's me. Hello. Oh, hello, it's Josie. Just to let you know, I am watching you and I am live. Josie, oh, no, Keith's... you're live, so am I. Keith Smart, how are you? All right. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you, darling. It's the first thank time, you, darling. Very first... nice show. Thoroughly enjoyed it. You're in Tenerife, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in Tenerife now. First time, yes. first time we've ever spoke. You know what? I'm sure your son has told you this. We are constantly being confused for each other. Oh no! Yeah, you're, I can... you're a lot younger than him, now, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm fifty-one. Fifty-one? Yeah, I'm fifty-one. Oh. Oh, well, you're doing... Well, Well, actually, you, you do look well. I mean, you look like his, his, his younger brother. Yeah, a lot of people say that. They they oh, confuse, because, right. of course, he does the, the cabaret, the singing, I do the DJ and karaoke. And I yeah. have people come up to us and say, oh, we haven't seen you on the stage for a while. No, no, that's not me, that's Keith. Oh, it's oh, not you, then. Yeah, yeah, they they don't believe it's... it's, it's have um, you finished on the radio telly now? Hey, I'm about to you finish could... in a few minutes' time. No, we're still on at the moment, my darling. Oh, and oh, what are you there for? <laughs> what? Oh, I'll let you go then, babe. No, no, we're chatting. How long are you All in right. Tenerife for? Hey. How long are you in Tenerife for? I'll go home next Friday. Okay. Would you like go to move? Go home next Friday. I've been bitten by the mozzies. Oh no. Um, I broke my toe before I came out here, so. Um, How did you I'm do gonna... that? I kicked into some suitcases and then a wall oh god and i was sober yeah so i'm going out this afternoon to um, a barbecue and i'm going to put my my foot in a sling right w would you like so, to live there would you like to live there josie pardon darling would you like to live in tenerife yes you would yes it's it, it's nice waking up to the ocean every morning yeah, and yeah. everything like that all i've got chris is i wake up to um as this car park where do you live Captain Junction. Oh, right, okay, yeah, I know it. I, I work there on um, uh, Thursday yeah. nights. I know Clapham. I used to live in Wandsworth, I think Keith's told you, and I had a little oh, yeah. flat and, you know, there was a tree out the back, but it's all buildings. I would. Mm -hmm. I live in Bracknell now. I'm surrounded by trees and grass. I would never want that's, to live back in, in London that's again. That's what I want, is to have it smothered trees and grass but not before me time if you know what I mean I yeah. don't want to die tomorrow <laughs> you don't want to be pushing them up quite yet do you <laughs> hey? I've got to go lovey alright nice to talk to you Josie Thank bye bye you, my love. cheerio now talking to you bye bye now bye. there we are bye. Tenerife, wow. They're all coming in now, aren't they? At the end of the show as well. I don't think there's any more messages to read today, boys and girls. Let me just have a quick chat. Uh, often Vicky sends one in very late. I'll just have a quick chat in case she has. Not today, though, no. Vicky's not, not sent one in today. That's it then uh, today. Um, I was just saying to you, 
I have placed a bet, and Shania says she, she Shania likes the UK entry. So yeah, fair enough, you know. Um, uh, but I've put a bet on Austria to win. And it's, I think it's a brilliant song, the staging. So if you get a chance, do watch that tonight, 8 o'clock, BBC One, this year's Eurovision Song Contest, live from Denmark. It is Denmark, isn't it? I can't remember. They all look the same to me, these countries. I'm going now. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, we do a daily short video, boys and girls. You can find those at Chris Reardon, uh, sorry, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. And uh, we're back with another live show next Saturday at 12 o'clock UK time, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Don't forget, do send us an email, especially if you're one of the people in uh, many of the other countries who uh, are joining us, uh, certainly for the recording uh, now, uh, Mexico and Russia. I don't, uh, Mexico and Russia, a lot of people in Mexico and Russia watching. The email address, send an email at any time. I love to read your emails out. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye now.